Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. Today, we're up in Sweden, actually Jönköping, where DreamHack Sweden is taking place. The biggest land festival in the world, actually. 50,000 people are going to be there. And I'm going to be there casting Paladins alongside my roommate, who's actually not in here, Fox, Tempest, and Driver. You guys, I'm sure, know him if you're in the Smite scene. So I'm very excited. I'm going on like 26 hours of travel right now, just being awake. So I'm like, ooh, give me some sleep. We're about to go eat, and it's going to be crazy. Um, but I wanted to do this kind of vlog series. So I don't know what I'll talk about, but I want to make sure the videos are coming to the channel while I'm here. It's a really cool experience. I want to talk to you guys about what I'm learning. Um, you know, new updates are going to have, obviously, new releases for Paladins while I'm here. The Bomb King's coming out. Uh, they just put a video out for that. That's going to be dope. They're also going to have, I think, a new Smite. A lot of new Smite skins that are going to be amazing, so we can maybe do a video about that, talk about our impressions of them. Um, I'm really excited for it. So hopefully we're going to be doing this blog series, and maybe at the end I'll have taken some video and I'll be able to do a compilation like, yo, this is Sweden, this is DreamHack. Anything like that, so you guys might be interested. And if you guys might be interested in just checking out the city, I know I would be as a viewer just seeing. I've never been to Sweden, so this is my first time, and obviously I'm feeling connected. And uh, I forgot, guys, I forgot. Last couple of videos, I'm sorry, I forgot to not read this book. I was rushing out in haste, so I wanted to also make sure that every every video was some type of vlog and then motivation, talking about that, and then just talking about what's up. What's up. So if you guys want to connect with me, I think this is going to be a fun little series for us to do, and maybe if we enjoy it, we'll be able to do it in other places, even in LA or wherever I'm at. Um, so let's get to the quote, because that's what I want to get to. I know I know a lot of you guys were like, yo, Randy, you said you're going to do a quote, and now I'm not getting a quote. And I'm like, you know what? I said I was going to do a quote, and now I'm not getting a quote. So remember we had the hard work quote by Lena Dunham. Today, again, it's, it's, it's always seem impossible until it's done. It's a little book of mini quotes every day. We're going to read one uh, for our videos and just hopefully just reflect about it. You guys can just take it with you in your life. You, you can hear me talk about it. Um, but it's called Making Mistakes. This is very apt. We have all heard the forlorn refrain. Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. This phrase has come to stand for the rueful reflection of an idiot, a sign of stupidity. But in fact, we should appreciate it as a pillar of wisdom. Any being, any agent who can truly say, well, it seemed like a good idea at the time, is standing on the threshold of brilliance. Now, this is by Daniel Dennett, a philosopher, that I honestly have no idea who he is. But it seems like he's talking about this thing I talk about in my videos all the time. And the reason why I love F7 and all of that. And it's because... Uh, the, the ability to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes are, are possibly your most brilliant moments of coming to a realization about something. I mean, oftentimes, think about it. When you're doing well, do you really evaluate yourself or do you just kind of look for the praise, right? I mean, when you're doing well, you're kind of like, hey, everyone, tell me I'm doing well, right? I scored this goal, tell me I'm doing well. You're not thinking about, well, could I have been more efficient? Could I have scored that goal in a little bit of a better way? Could I have been that much more of a hero? You know, you're not really thinking that way. You're just kind of like going with the praise, and that's fine. We lived in, in, a, in a society in America that really praised praises, you know, like actions, right? Do this, you get praised. Um, rather than a lot of being. But I think mistakes are so key, and I want to keep in, encouraging you as Rain Day Gaming viewers and subs to look at your mistakes as, as lessons, as stepping stones, as abilities to go ahead and say, this didn't work, okay? This is feedback. It didn't work. It's not bad. It's just letting me know this is not the path I need to take. Just like a, a brick wall is standing in front of your direction, if you bump into it, you know it doesn't work. So you have to find a way around it. Maybe it's over. Maybe it's under. Maybe it's around, like I just mentioned. But it's not straight through. You need to adjust yourself. And that's one of the beauty of, of mistakes, and that's what I think the brilliance comes from. It's, it's kind of hitting that moment and saying, I need to do something different. I need to change my path. So in your Smite games and your Paladins games and whatever you're doing, if you want to get over something, you want to get better, start evaluating your mistakes more and more. Look at them and say, what is a, what is happening here consistently that I'm getting feedback about that I'm not necessarily paying attention to and incorporating into my life? Because that could help you not only in Smite, but in the real world. If you're getting into a ton of fights and specific relationships, if you're getting into a ton of issues at work that are the same overwhelming issues, what is that telling you that maybe you're not listening to? So pretty much that's just my thought about that. Think about what the world is trying to tell you through your mistakes and, and what you could be maybe telling yourself by repeating the same mistakes, going down that same path, kind of in your brain memory, in the back of your mind, knowing, hey, that didn't work last time, but I'm still going to do it. You know what I mean? And anyways, we'll keep on with this series, guys. It's quick, under five minutes. Hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys a lot more this week with some more videos like this. And of course, uh, obviously, I've got another gameplay video coming out that I've recorded for you guys. That's a really fun one. Tune in. And then I'll be talking about cool topics like in Smite, like uh, the next topic. I'll be talking about is uh, do you build a god towards a god's abilities 
Uh, do you build towards a god's strengths or weaknesses? Do you try and basically make their strengths that much stronger when you build towards them? Or do you try to build to offset their weaknesses and make their weaknesses less of a weakness so you're even that playing field? What do you do? I have my decision on how I like to do it, but I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to think. And we'll probably cover that in the next vlog, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And of course, all the dream hack sweetness stuff I'll be covering. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. And as always, remember to never give up and never stop gaming. And I'll see you guys next time.